So what major changes have there been? Well, there have been major changes in every aspect of the things in which I've been interested. Medicine has changed enormously over the years. It used to be great fun. I'm not saying that medicine isn't a serious matter. Taking care of individual patients is a very serious business. But it should be fun as well for those who are doing it. Because unless it's good fun, if, unless they're enjoying what they're doing, they won't do it as well as they would if they're enjoying it. And I think a lot of the enjoyment has gone out of medicine with increasing bureaucracy in the way it's run. And several things have contributed to that. Uh, the increasing demands of appraisal, annual appraisal, five yearly revalidation, the stresses and strains that all those processes put on individuals, I think, have reduced the amount of enjoyment that you get from the subject, making it much more difficult to practice. The working time directive that was instituted by the European Union, which is good for junior doctors because they have to work less hard, has meant that care has become fragmented because no longer are the same doctors available for long durations of time to look after the same patients. So the junior doctors are no longer experiencing continuity of care of the same patients as they used to. This means that they come and go, they see a patient for a short period of time, hand the patient on to somebody else who then hands the patient on to somebody else and so on and the care tends to be fragmented. I think this is bad for the doctors and perhaps bad for the patients as well because the care that they take is more likely to be discontinuous and therefore the history of the patient the history of the patient's complaint, the way it has proceeded and all the important facets of what went before will be lost because the same individual is not looking after the patient all the time. So I think there are changes there that I regret that I think have taken the enjoyment out of medicine and have taken the continuity out of medicine, making it much more difficult to practice high quality medicine than we used to. Of course there, there have been positive changes as well. Uh, the number of beneficial medicines that we have now is really quite staggering. The advent, for example, of monoclonal antibodies has brought a whole range of very highly specific treatments into medical therapy and allowed us to tackle problems that we couldn't tackle before. A lot of treatments for cancers, for example, are now available that have improved prognosis enormously. There are cancers now we can cure that we couldn't cure when I was a medical student. There have been a lot of wonderful therapeutic advances. <clears throat> of course that in its turn has brought problems as well because these new medicines are exceptionally expensive and the budget available for treatment is limited. And so the modern business of deciding whether a drug is cost effective, in other words is good value for money, has become a major problem and a lot of people find it difficult to understand why a new medicine that might transform their lives, might improve their outcomes, cannot be made available because it's just too expensive. And that's difficult for people to understand and I appreciate that. But there are real problems about budgets, about how much we can afford and about how the activities of drug companies which are very expensive in drug development, drug discovery and drug development, can be kept in check so that they can make a reasonable profit from their activities, uh, enough to fund future activities and the discovery of new medicines, while at the same time allowing us to live within our budget. And that is a difficult problem that is really a very modern one with all the new medicines we have that are so very expensive. And I don't think we've yet found the perfect way of dealing with that, but we are slowly coming to terms with the problem uh, through uh, persuading drug companies to give discounts on certain medicines in order to allow the health service to afford how to, uh, how to use them. So I think that's been a major change in medical practice that affects us all.